Okay. All right. Third time's the fucking charm, huh? Hey, GR here, Playbase. I am coming at you live from the time period when I have to do it before I have to go back to the doctor because they were busy and they gave me an extra hour. So, uh, this will be the fourth time. A little bit of technical difficulties right at the front of the uh, but, uh, <laughs> let's get back to parody of analogy, shall we, for 3CSD, 300 seconds daily of ludological analysis and ponderings in vlog form from GR Playbase. The thing about parody of analogy is that it creates suspension of disbelief. How does it do this? It does it, first of all, what is parody of, uh, of, of analogy? Every game is an abstraction of something that you experience and relate to, either directly or indirectly. And the degree to which it is abstracted is really the degree to which we consider something a strategy game. And the degree to which the relationship between the choices that you have there is the degree to which that we think it is a tactical game. And the degree to which um, the... the granularity and real-time linear aspect of the way that things play out is done is the degree to which we think of it as like a role-playing or a first-person game. Now, of course, these are video game terms, but they apply to things like chess, right? Chess is a very good example of parody of analogy because chess, which is really about social dynamics, that's why it's interesting, it's also why it's universal, and social constructs, the abstraction of social power and social interrelationship and support and danger, which is what all that's about, is abstracted more or less uniformly and to be honest, quite highly abstracted in the game and the relationship between the pieces is abstracted consistently. So you have the, the underclass, you have the pawns, who can really only do one thing in one direction, and they have opportunities to strike, but they're very rare edge cases where they're literally hitting on the edge or doing diagonals. And they're very vulnerable to attack until they get to the end. And if they go all the way through, they have a chance to advance in their station. Most of the second row characters are, you know, members of clerical orders or uh, different monopolies on state violence, rooks, knights, and then you have the king and the queen, which could be a gender commentary, but really what it is referring to is the relationship between the actual central figure of a power base, the king, can't move very much, can't move very far, can't move very fast, and every move that he makes is fraught with danger and opens him up to fatal vulnerability. Whereas the hand behind the power, the kind of um, you know Moff Tarkin guy from Game of Thrones can move all over the place is far more deadly and far more agile. And which is also why when you get a pawn to the other side, they don't become king, they become the person who does all the work, you know, behind the scenes for the king. So this is worthwhile even just as a casual player to understand because it gives you the ability to articulate what it is that you're liking or disliking about a game and, you know, really how you feel about something. It, give, it, it, it empowers your voice to have a quality of direction and clarity, right? So, you know, one of the issues like in D&D, for instance, uh, house ruling, this is about parity of analogy. And, you know, in, in a previous video, I mentioned how my house rule was, when I was a player, it was always that, and I never actually even used it. It was just a real issue for me because um, that dexterity and strength are not... Dexterity is not how you use a bow, and strength is not how you use a sword. In fact, the, the, the raw strength you need to even to, to pull a bow and fire it correctly is how you classify them. But it wasn't even because it came up in play, but because it interrupted my parody of analogy, right? My ability to interact with the abstracted reality of the game. And like I was saying yesterday with uh, River City Ransom, the thing about that was that everything was in relation to itself. So the thing about a game that is immersive is the fact that it's consistently in relation to itself. That's what parity of analogy is about. It's really, 
you can think of it as the like the grade or the quality w with you know there you go so uh leave a comment uh if you want to have a comment answered and uh we'll talk to you tomorrow ciao ciao this one is gonna work i have a good feeling about this number four all right bye uh, but, uh, but this better work